What's going on? Move the Mouse here, back in City Skylines, the town of Rosewood. Let's play Season 10, Episode number 6, or 5 and a half, depending on how you look at it. I, the last episode I recorded was a really long one, and uh, I, I just didn't want to post like an hour-long video. So I decided to split up into two chunks, so with that out of the way, let's dive in and pick up right where we left off last episode. Let's pause. And let's talk about what we unlocked at 5,000. So we've got some new policies. We've got some new, new unique buildings. Uh, we're not going to do trolley bus because we just did tram. And we did trolley bus in the, the last city to kind of focus on some of the Sunset Harbor stuff. So we'll do something a little different. Uh, all kinds of policies. We'll take a quick look through that. Decorative roads. Such a great step. Um, we'll talk about why in a minute. For two things. One, for the appearance in a green city. Having some grass lined streets and trees. Um, but also crosswalks. Many of you may know the trick already, but we'll go ahead and um, cover it again anyways because it's super quick and it's super useful. The highways with sound barriers. We've got larger versions of the hospital, fire station, police headquarters. We'll see how big those are, though, in the context of the city and see if we use those. Um, I mean, I think we should at least once, but we'll decide kind of where that uh, quote-unquote downtown area is. Uh, fire helicopter depot, nice. We still don't have the fire watch towers, but helps a little bit. And we've unlocked that geothermal plant, which is a uh, a nice thing we can drop in as a, a power source that I don't think is too big. Let's do that, and then we'll come back and take a quick look at some of the buildings we've unlocked. There's actually a lot of stuff uh, that we can drop in from some of the uh, content creator packs and things like that if you have those. So there's also some stuff that we hadn't dropped in uh, healthcare wise like the uh, elder care and child care so this will actually burst the birth rate in the city provides a health benefit and then this uh, helps citizens live longer the longer they live the longer they're paying taxes so win win so i i thought we could actually get some of these in here around our kind of central area since this is the the part of the build that we're really focusing on right now or at least that i'm focusing on right now this is actually kind of a cool little spot to tuck it into behind that zoning. I kind of like that. Is that going to let me... There we go. I actually really, really kind of like how that all fits together. We've got this little commercial pocket you can pull into. Let's, uh, let's let it play so that builds up and we can see some of these. We've got the healthy weeds, the farm stands moving in. There's uh, little car parks. There we go. Charge parks for electric cars. So you get a, a really different look and for a neighborhood part of the town that would be really focused on you know green living uh whoops are they part of their own grid let me double check this they are not they're hooked into everything else okay that was one of the things that we unlocked that we wanted to talk about let's get a geo thermal power plant let's take a look at this it is sixty five thousand dollars we got plenty of money for that thousand a week upkeep zero pollution it's got some noise pollution so that's not bad for 80 megawatts. That's our best thing producing right now, right? Because these are up to eight. These are up to 20. And then this is a considerable investment at once, but I'm gonna put it, where should I put it? Can I put it right there? Uh, we want easy access to the fire station. We'll drop it in right there. We'll kind of move some things around or turn this into, you know, recycling and wastewater and all the city services and get get the industry out of here altogether. Uh, but that should give us plenty of power. Let's see what that did. What, what's our demand at? Consumption's at 113. We just added 80. Right, is that what we did? And then this is 240. But, you know, as much as I love that, I think that's going to be way too tall. This fits our skyline. So that was a great uh, suggestion in the comments. I, I never remember who, who mentions it, 
but uh, I do read the comments. I try and, you know, at, at least give you a like or uh, a quick reply. It's tough though. There's a lot of comments. There's a lot of the how-to videos and things like that that people watch and uh, you wouldn't believe. Of course. Oh, we just missed it. But there was one. We can confirm that today was not a fire-free episode. This wasn't a barn burner. Um, lots of stuff. Okay, come. Let's come over here for a second, just because it's fresh in my mind. I'm, I'm probably forgetting something else I was talking about 30 seconds ago. But um, we've unlocked some new stuff in our our farming industry. So let's go all the way back to the beginning, just to see and review. You've got the main building that we set up all the way down here in the end. We're gonna move all this stuff around. I've started adding uh, barracks, and basically barracks increase the efficiency of the workers in the area. Um, by 5% per building up to 100%. So quick bit of math, 20 buildings will give you an extra 100% uh, efficiency. We've dropped in four so far. They also have the benefit of themselves housing up to 40 workers. So that's increasing the, the worker count that you have in the zone. So right now we have 420 of 500 possible worker slots in our zone and we need 550 for the next level so for some added efficiency and just some extra worker slots a cheap way we can drop some of that demand is to add some more barracks we've got a, a row of barracks here i made a a block that is uh, have, has four blocks of space as you can see because they fit back to back now if we wanted to we could do some pedestrian pass through here every couple um but we don't we're not gonna worry about that just yet uh we have the small crop field and now we have the medium crop field as well so let's extend this road and double check our water coverage i can't go that way um let's see how big that building is can we move that into the center that would be hot that's awesome love it uh so that's actually really cool that that is a four wide fits with the barracks it's actually kind of nice that that works out that way because now we can extend this road into the the fertile land which is where we really need to get to so let's let's have that kind of light up with that node oh it's a little too far that should move that node over one kind of create an extra one they're not doing lane changes though so it shouldn't make a difference at least not in the the current uh lane setup there so, but what that does is that moves us towards the lighter grass, which is where the fertile farmland is. We'll give ourselves a little bit of space. Again, we'll move all this around later. But if we jump back in here, now we've got a slightly larger version of the um, the crop field and fruit field. So let's let's take a look at both of those real quick. There's a crop field. There's the medium fruit field. And we can inspect on these and change what they look like based on what they're growing. So if we want it to be, you know, corn, if we want it to be wheat, uh, what did I do? If we want it to be a big greenhouse in comparison to the slightly smaller ones that we saw over here, we can do that. And this could actually be a really cool look to have the different size greenhouses, uh, especially if you're working on a snow map. You don't want to have a bunch of outdoor crops and man, the poor animals. There's not an indoor option for the animals, is there? Not technically, but you could have, uh, I think, does cattle shed produce? I really should, I really should know this stuff. Uh, takes crops, outputs, animal products. So yeah, that would work the same and it, it technically keeps the cows indoors so that you, you can do things that make sense in a, uh, a snow build if you're doing things a little different. Uh, where is that overlaps? Well, it's got power. So we've dropped in a couple extra fruit fields. Do we have anything else? We dropped in, uh, or I dropped in the flour mill, I should say. There's a milking parlor. Pollution and noise pollution. You got to watch out for these things. The processing buildings generally pollute where the regular farm buildings don't. That's why I kind of put that one off to the side. Because you don't want to pollute your farmland where you're growing your food or where people are uh, living. So, yeah, we've got we got a couple different options there. I think we've got storage, too. I haven't looked into this at all, but small barn uh, can store uh, the small 
silo can store the, the grain, the crops, and then the small barn can store other things. And we've got fences, but we'll unlock some other processing buildings, maintenance buildings, and larger versions of the... Do we have a medium animal? No, it's large uh, and small. So we'll unlock a large version of fruit and crops, as well as a large version of the, the animal pasture. So more on that to come. Let's just double check before I get out of here. So much to talk about. Uh, 528, 704 possible workers. So we're close. We're getting there. So we'll, we'll get level four before we know it. Um, because we're not meeting the industry demand any place else other than adding more spots for people to work here at this farm. That's what's kind of helping us get those workers in there. Um, noise. I get so sidetracked. Uh, noise wise, this is actually really noisy. I did not mean to put this this close to these residents. We might look at moving that down at some point, or maybe even just putting it on the other side of the road, right? And then doing the turnaround over here, that that would actually solve our problem there. Uh, I'll do that off camera, though. That's easy enough, right? Just, you know, delete this turnaround, move this building, and add the turnaround to the other side. But that will actually solve kind of our noise problem there. How's our little, how's our little district doing over here? This is pretty cool. There's a lot of parking for electric cars. That really works out for that lot size. So we might have to bulldoze some of those and take a random roll on what moves in until we really like it and when we like it you know because we've got two healthy weeds right there i feel like it would be nice depending on the zoning how it breaks to get the healthy weeds kind of right on the corner like the big the big store should be right on the corner there um so maybe we'll break some stuff and try and try and get the thing that we want to move in but uh yeah when you see what you like make it historical that way when it levels it won't change although i take it back Specialized industry buildings are always the highest level. So you don't need to worry about that with these. So we can just break those. If we wanted a Penny's, AKA Denny's to move in, for those of you that are familiar with the uh, breakfast establishment, 24 seven, 365, um, there's a Penny's restaurant that's basically just changing the P to a D. Uh, I'm sure no copyright infringement was intended. Wink, wink. It's, I mean, you know, come on, it's a nod. There's lots of that in the game. Um, but I, I really wanted to have one of those on my main street for whatever reason. Probably because I had my fair share of uh, very late night, very early morning breakfast there um, after events I won't talk about. It doesn't matter. Where, where were we? Hang on a second. Where? There was something over here. Look over there. But noise-wise, definitely something we want to keep an eye out for. It. The windmills are terrible. Um, <laughs> some might even say they cause cancer, but that's up for debate. Uh, the industry's terrible, and commercial in general is pretty bad. Low density is a little bit better. We can see that we are minimizing the spread, but there's also a lot of people that I think are turning around in this back neighborhood and causing traffic. So we want to look at having maybe a turnaround on this side that goes over or under the highway maybe comes out to those same four uh three-way intersections becomes a four-way intersection that way we can move the the traffic kind of out of the residential area because that's exactly what's happening is you know businesses are businesses using it as a cut through when they can't get to the right side of the street do we see trucks coming through there uh we can check this so on console it's a little different uh you can inspect on the road name and then go to the routes view. That's one way to get there. But we can see what all the different types are doing. And in fact, let's take a quick look at this. What are our pedestrians doing? They're getting all the way through the neighborhoods and we haven't done any pedestrian pass. They're not walking down here though. And when we add more pedestrian pass, that should help that out. Uh, cyclists, kind of doing the same thing. Private vehicles kind of odd I don't think that's entirely up to date public transport and cargo I don't see anything on that that doesn't seem right what are trucks doing so trucks are taking this street to turn around or at least that's where one is right now it's not that bad am I inspecting the wrong road or something 
There's got to be another way to get to this, right? Can we go into info views? Is there a routes from here? Yeah. So if we're looking at just truck traffic, what are they doing? They are turning into that back street, right? So that's creating a little bit of traffic in the residential area that we don't want. Can we fix that? So what I want to do here is I want to cover, let me, uh, let me go to the small tool for a minute because I want to cover the roads here, but I don't want to affect the commercial businesses up on the main street. We want this to be its own district. That should be good enough. And then we'll switch to the medium tool. Fill all that in. I'll clean all this up later. It's fine. Don't worry about it. It's a little, it's a little slop, of course. They're right on top of it. They're, they've been getting there pretty good. I don't, for all the fires that I have, you don't see a lot of buildings burned down. And I will say, I usually remember in time. So we've made all this a district. Did we, did we even unlock the thing that I was hoping that we would have unlocked? So all of the residents, all of those back streets are covered by this district. If we go into policies, we go over to city planning. Yes. Really cool things that we've unlocked policy wise for dealing with traffic. So old town is a great one. Only residents and businesses can use the area for motor vehicle traffic, ban other motor vehicle traffic. Uh, now we're gonna have to think about a turnaround. We'll, we'll do that too right now. So let's make these three lane intersections, three way rather. Let's make them uh, four ways. Over here, I want to do something just a little bit different. So where can we? We'll connect these back after. What I want to do here is break out the landscaping tool. Go kind of right in the middle. We're going to go down a little bit. Uh, let's now level based on that. Come out a little bit on either side. How deep is that depression? Way too big. So let's smooth this out a little bit now. Just to bring that up a bit. That should be more than enough. And then what I'm thinking is slope tool. Uh, again, slope tool right about there. And then we're going to build a little road underneath. Let's come out uh, 15. So that'll be five additional units from there. Is that kind of right in the middle? It is. So let's see what that looks like. That's a gravel road. That's not what I meant to do. Uh, and we could think traffic flow wise, possibly making this a one way, but let's do one thing at a time here. So we'll, we'll upgrade these roads. What I meant to do. Get that power hooked back up before I forget. Ah, uh, really? Can we, we can do that. Okay. And then let's, let's see here, break out the landscaping tool again, and I'm going to try and level right here. And it's not going to let me move up the road underneath. It's going to pinch all the terrain around it. So we create that little underpass. like that. Now let's actually smooth that out even some more. Uh, I take it back. We'll smooth out after we build all the roads. Because we want this part to remain relatively flat for kind of connecting uh, our freeform roads. So let's come down with the two-lane highway. 
So I got totally sidetracked here, but I, I think this is going to be a nice, nice little part of the build once it's all done. We just have to kind of do all this at once, unfortunately. Come down to there. We'll reverse this direction after just so we have nice even snaps. And then can we do what I want to do here? Ugh, it's going to force snapping down there. Come on, we can do this, right? Can we get across here? We have to elevate. Okay, so let's try this. We're on the lowest elevation step. Right? Yes. Okay, we're going to delete this segment. We're going to go straight. Elevate one tick to there. And let's come off of here. Let's see. So will it let us connect that? It will. Okay. So can we go from here? Can we do this? Should we just do it like that? Oh, that's way too sharp, Ben. What am I thinking? No, I need to go that it'll let us do it it looks a little crazy but it is it is large enough if it lets us do it so let's see if we can do that same sort of thing over here so We might have to do this in two pieces like that and like that. That's okay though. See, how does that okay, we're gonna change the directions, don't worry about that. It's a it's a tiny little bit off. Can we can we smooth out more now that that's done? Let's see. Massive brush. Smooth this out a little bit on this side. I think that will help it look. I don't know. I think I might have liked it better before with the, the sharp angles because it is it is supposed to be cut out of there. So let's kind of force it. That's very dangerous without the divider coming up to that point. Oh, we, I think we can fix that now with decorative roads. I am just all over the place today. Let's do this. Ready? Look, now you won't go careening off the side of the, the highway into that ditch. Uh, we're good over here. Anytime it's elevated, it automatically does that barrier, but we have these sound barrier options now, um, which are not a bad thing, but we don't have any highway, I think, that close to residential just yet. All right, so let's fix our directions. Jumping absolutely all over the place today. If you're, if you've managed to stay tuned this long to uh, my ADD stream of consciousness, uh, by all means, leave a like. It's greatly appreciated. Let's wrap up a couple more things, though. Change direction. That's the thing I wanted while I was talking. Trying to be funny. Just build mouse. Just, just stop. Um, so that... What that does. Why we had to do all that. Long way around. Wow. Okay. Um, when we turn Old Town on, we're saying that if you want to enter uh, Cypress Heights with a vehicle, you better be destined for something in that zone. You're a resident that lives there or you're a city service vehicle like police, fire, health, garbage. That's, that's going to provide a service to some place in that uh, neighborhood. But what that means is that makes it almost impossible or where, you know, if I come into the city and I wanted to deliver goods to, so, you know, a business over here, I would have to drive all the way down here. Uh, maybe they could use this as a U-turn, but I don't think so. They'd have to basically drive somewhere where they could do a U-turn, like come into here, you know, turn around at the end of that street and then come all the way back down here to deliver to a business all over on this side. So what this does now is now they've got a two-way that they can turn around. So when they come into the city, uh, they can turn right. 
come back around here and then hit a business that's on this side of the street. And we'll do uh, little creative ways to create turnarounds for that. But when we define Old Town, we're preventing the, the trucks from using that. So if we go back into info views and routes again and look at truck traffic, we should see that now it's no longer going to be using that neighborhood because it can't. It's not an option. So they'll go all the way down there and turn around if they have to. It looks like we've got to come up with some other some other turnarounds for getting to uh, the opposite side of the street, right? We got to we got to come up with a, a way to turn traffic around over here. So maybe we'll turn this into a road loop that uh, that also has the tram track on it for that purpose, kind of like a jug handle uh, on a divided uh, highway. Some of you may know what I'm talking about. Uh, I'll maybe we'll, we'll add one in if you don't. But uh, just just Google jug handle traffic. Because uh, you see that all the time in, in divided uh, split highways like this. Or, or not necessarily a highway, right? It's a road, but effectively. Same sort of thing. Depends on where you are and what the purpose of the road is. Not really germane to today's <laughs> discussion. Today's discussion was just absolutely all over the place. I feel like today was a particularly crazy one. I don't think that we got to all the things that I wanted to talk about. Those uh, policies that we unlock at this level, third time is a charm, uh, are really, really good. Uh, we can encourage biking. Just check the box. It helps. Uh, you can ban heavy traffic. So we could have done that in the residential area. Would have had basically the same effect as Old Town uh, in that current uh, layout. But let's say there was a commercial area on the other side. Like we had a commercial area down here. Um, heavy traffic ban would basically say, you know, you can't drive through here with a truck. Old Town says you can't drive here through a, with a passenger car unless you live here. So if there was a separate district down here that was commercial, you'd have to find another way or you'd have to walk through or take mass transit or, or something else. But that basically that string, uh, man, I, I'm going to get it one of these times. That string that you unlock right here at uh, this particular milestone called Busy Town is just policies. It's so, so good uh, for managing traffic. So definitely consider those, see what effects they have, but also understand how they impact delivery to certain areas. You don't want to stamp down Old Town in the wrong spot and then prevent businesses from getting trucks, which prevent them from doing business and then they go out of business. Um, so you don't want that. Traffic wise, let's just take a look before we get out of here because I know some of you are, are going to be concerned. We're still at 92% even with all the shenanigans. So that's not bad, you know, and we're still working off of one highway exit for this entire city. So we'll um, we'll keep trying to level this this thing up in bits and pieces before we do a massive rebuild on it. We're almost there. Workers until next level 555 out of Okay, so we're just barely at the worker count and we're waiting on resources right now. So let's make sure that we get the worker count. We'll add a few more barracks in down this strip. Just to kind of throw it over the edge. That should give us plenty of worker slots. And what are we at? One, two, three, four. Uh, that is eight plus six, 14. You can have up to 20. Should we just do it? Right? 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So we are running at plus 100% efficiency now. Of course, we're not producing that much stuff because most of our workers are just there to amp up efficiency. Uh, but hey, that'll be great when we add other stuff in. And uh, and that way I don't have to count next episode. That's not what I want to do. I keep, I keep getting sidetracked. I keep wanting to move on to the next thing which the next thing right now is the outro, but just to double check, we got almost 1,200 worker slots. So, okay, we're good there. We just need to produce goods. So if we just waited, this will do what we need to do, but we'll add some more fields and, and put some more stuff down and uh, make sure we have very, very low industrial demand so that workers can go work there. We'll continue, I think, to really expand this green neighborhood and look to potentially buy the, uh, the tile to the north maybe north central or northeast, uh, depending on where we can hook highway into this tile. Because I think that would be good to support some more direct connection to the backside of this neighborhood 
and eventually we'll expand kind of around the lake too and have maybe some uh some waterfront property and things like that so much to do so little time before you know it season will be over we'll be working on the next thing but hopefully we enjoy this one along the way i really i was committing to a new season every season right um so every three months in the calendar you know as seasons change i was going to change the season i think this one i think it's time that i really build a town out one interesting predicament we're going to run into is i want to keep things small but if we want to unlock all nine tiles we have to get up to a certain population cap so that's a problem for much further in the future but i might reserve a little corner of the map maybe up by the the train in the northwest maybe we'll have to build up that way first because it's a really nice flat area maybe we can build uh, just a ton of people uh get them to move in uh, and then back it all down um and, and you know re hit the reset switch on it but i do want to unlock the tiles i don't necessarily care about the monuments this build um, we're going to go green without the Eden Project. We're going to see how low we can get ground and water pollution, um, even you know without uh, Eden helping us out there. So that's always kind of a cheat, but uh, we're not going to go for the monuments. We're just going to go for the nine tiles and really try and keep things small, do things a little bit different. If you stay tuned this long, you know the drill, though. So thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed. Likes, comments, shares all help the channel. Subscribe if you're new. Hit the bell to get notifications. Join the Discord if you got questions. Awesome group of people over there. We play on all platforms. And whether you're a veteran or a beginner, someone will be able to help you out. If you'd like to support the channel, links to that and everything else in the description down below. From here to there and everywhere in between, this is the greenest city that you've ever seen. On my channel, at least. Until the next one, this is Move the Mouse, signing off.